guys! So I recently put up a video showing my results of me speaking Mandarin after learning it for 30 days and I'll link it up there if you haven't seen it already but in that video I briefly spoke about my identity of being Chinese and how I'm slowly kind of finding out what it means to be Chinese. I don't think I've really touched on it before, I know I made a video about a year and a half ago um, that was titled my open letter to racism following an incident that happened uh, in London um, but I've never really like properly spoken about my background and my experience of being Chinese uh, in the UK and I watch a lot of Asian American content creators on YouTube and this video was very uh, inspired by Wei Li who was talking about her struggles of being American Chinese um, but I don't see a lot of it from the UK side so I thought I would speak up about that and then if anybody can relate to it um, even if you're not Asian and you're from another ethnic minority or you just wanted to kind of find out more about what it's like from another perspective then hopefully this will be useful. So to give a bit of a background story I was born in London and I spent a few years there but I spent the majority of my childhood in a small village in the south coast of England. It was very very close to Brighton so I normally just say Brighton. Um, I did actually live in Brighton for a few years as well. I moved there when I was six to a Chinese takeaway called the Jade Garden. In terms of going to school apart from um, another Chinese girl who I'm actually friends with called Winnie we were the only two kind of Chinese Asian people so I always knew that I was different but I never really thought too much of it like I grew up aware being Chinese and I grew up aware knowing that we had different circumstances and different cultures and things and I spoke a language that no one else really knew and in a different sense to um, Whaley's video, I didn't really feel a lot of racism from my classmates. There were occasionally comments from people of different year groups just being like ching chong chong and they'll do like the hand gestures and stuff but it was never enough to affect me too much apart from I'll just be like oh piss off like just to grow up um, but it never really angered me too much to like get into fights or get too upset about it or whatever but I actually saw most of it from other Chinese people and this being the family friends who I don't think they meant anything like any harm by it but I think especially from you know being Chinese they are very very blunt especially if you're Cantonese um, and so a lot of things they say can be like straightforward they don't beat around the bush and they just say it how it is I know that I don't look Chinese um, and I look very very different from the rest of my family so my both my sisters are very very fair skinned they kind of have almond shaped eyes thin lips very very like pale in comparison to what I am um, and I grew up very very dark and my lips are a lot thicker than the typical Chinese person my eyes are smaller I just knew that my features weren't typically Chinese um, and I found out because everybody else told me that were adults so I grew up with my parents and their friends constantly telling me being like you're too dark you're too fat your lips are too big your eyes are too small why can't you be more like your sisters? So I grew up just constantly thinking, well, what am I? Because I'm definitely not English or Caucasian because I don't look anything like my friends. I don't look like my family members. And I think it scarred me mentally quite a bit as well. And now this bit's a little bit TMI because I remember whenever we'd have like baths and things, it got so bad that I remember just getting like the shower gel and the bath, like the bath cream stuff and I'll just rub it all over my limbs and my hands and my, all over my body and I'll look in the mirror and be like, I wish I was this pale, I wish I wasn't as dark as I am and I just wanted to fit in with everyone. And now thinking back, that was horrific. Like I would hate for my future children or for anyone to feel like they have to sit in a bathtub when they're like six years old rubbing bath lotion on them wanting to be paler. Like, that is really quite sad but yeah that's kind of like what I was like growing up and I just was just very very insecure about my looks. What I did notice was the little small differences of growing up from a Chinese family and then kind of bringing that into a more English side. So even things like taking my lunch to school and we have lunch boxes and my mum would wake up and make us some Chinese um, food to take in. And now back then she would do like the Chinese sausage, like steamed buns, she would do like dim sum, oh. and then she had like pork dumplings and things that she would steam and then put in a little box um, for us to have at lunchtime. Um, now I don't know if you've ever experienced steaming something and then putting it when it's still hot in a tight Tupperware box to then open up at lunchtime. 
it stinks, okay? Like, if it's a meat product, it's been steamed, there's so much air and stuff going on. When you open it up, it's like, whew, and everyone in the assembly hall will just turn around and be like, what is that smell? That smells disgusting. And um, I used to be so embarrassed, and this was a point I related to Wadey's video, because I'm like, yep, being there, being there when everyone's like, ew, what's that smell? And they'll look at you, and I'm just holding this lunchbox with these like weirdly shaped dumplings that were over steamed, and like bits of pork coming out of it, and I'll be like, Yep, it, it's me. And now thinking back, I'm a bit like, dang, like I would love to have dim sum for lunch every day and have somebody steam it ready for me instead of having a sandwich. Uh, but back then I just wanted to fit in. I was just like, yeah, like who would eat those dumplings and delicious steamed pork buns? What? Um, and I remember running home that day and being like, please never make it for me again. Everyone was laughing at me. And then my mum would be like, okay, fine. And then go to co-op and buy Lunchables and ham and butter sandwiches and wagon wheels. and it wasn't, it didn't taste that good and I didn't enjoy it, but I just felt like, mm, yeah, everyone was eating the same thing and now I am eating a ham and cheese sandwich and I hate ham and cheese. So, yes, there was that. Um, also, uh, and the only other friend who still remains my best friend and sister to this day, Hannah was the only person at school who would look at my lunch and been like, oh, I love Chinese food, can I try some? And she'd never judged me, like even growing up, I think I've known each other since I was six years old, it's our 20 year friendship anniversary this year, um, and she was the only person ever who never made me feel bad about bringing Chinese food to school. She'd actively be like, can I try some? Can we swap some things? When you're six years old, um, that means so much to you to have somebody just embrace your culture and to just be like, I don't care what the other kids say, I like it, I find it interesting and I'll be a part of it. And that explains why we are still friends to this day. I grew up in a household full of 80s Chinese songs. So if you ask me about like, um, Law Man, like Roman, Teresa Tang, Anita Mui, Leslie Chang, like all of that lot, I know all of their songs. But then it meant I didn't know anything about like the Spice Girls or pardon Britney Spears um, or Westlife, Blue, I don't even know who, who the major like 90s pop stars and 2000 pop stars were. Um, because we weren't really allowed to play that at home and like my parents would be like no you're not watching these music videos of these people like riffing about with snakes on their shoulders and stuff we will watch 80s Chinese programs and we were listening to the same VHS tape over and over every dinner time um, so then I'd go into school and people would talk about TV programs and films and like the coolest boy bands and girl bands and I would just be sitting in the corner being like I don't know who any of these people are I've never seen much like Asian representation in the mainstream media. It's changed in the past few years because we see a lot more like YouTubers and content creators and I think you're beginning to see a little bit of Asian influence in like mainstream media and Hollywood and things like that. But growing up, you never saw Asians um, on your TV screens and the only Asian I saw really that wasn't on a part of like Chinese TV programs uh, was Mulan from Disney and she also looked completely different to what I looked like so I was always like she was meant to be the role model that I am meant to be looking up to but she doesn't look anything like me so yeah it was it was pretty difficult growing up not knowing like who your role models are and my parents didn't really talk to us much about that we were very very like isolated from other communities i mean they had a lot of family friends and things but obviously then they separated and then we all went our own ways um and there was just so much negativity growing up. So then when I spent time with my friends and their families who weren't Chinese, then I just kind of began associating like, okay, well, good things and drama-free things are with that side, my friends and their families. And then all the negativity and, you know, the insecurities and the drama and all these horrible things that happen in childhood, I'm gonna associate that with being Chinese. Um, so then I just began to distance myself as much as possible and and I just didn't want, I wasn't interested in finding out what it means and I wasn't interested in being like there's another huge community outside of being, uh, outside my, you know, inner circle, my family members. Um, so it was always to me like something I shunned um, in my mind, something I wasn't interested in and something that I was just ashamed of being. Um, and now I know that's completely not true and it's more circumstantial because of what happened uh, with my family rather than actually them being Chinese if that makes sense. I was always drawn to my more like Caucasian friends and I mean they were the only friends I had like growing up as well. So in terms of my personality, my values, they are all very more 
British than it is Chinese. Like I'm not a very traditional person. So my parents and I always have clashes because their views and my views are completely different. Um, in recent years, I've been spending a lot more time with my extended family, getting to know them. I've been visiting Hong Kong a lot more. Um, now I'm trying to learn Mandarin. Um, I kind of now interact with Chinese media a lot more, I'm trying to just be a lot more closely associated with that culture and finding uh, out what it means to, to be a part of that culture a lot more and combining that with, you know, being British as well. Um, so yeah, it's, it's a work in progress, um, but I can like safely say now that I feel so comfortable in my skin. I feel so, so proud of being Chinese. Now it's, with everything going on in the world, we should be celebrating these differences and nobody should feel ashamed of their background and um, their experiences growing up and things. Like, it's so beautiful that everybody is different and it's so amazing, um, you know, to have these different traits and things and qualities and history about ourselves and it shouldn't be something to be embarrassed about. Um, so, yeah, it's certainly something that I don't feel um, embarrassed about anymore and something I'm now learning to embrace and I just wanted to document that process um, on here a lot more because I know that a few of you are uh, Chinese or Asian or you are come from you know different uh, ethnic minorities um, and I just don't feel like it's spoken about on in the mainstream media as much and it should be spoken about and you know YouTube is a great platform and it's a platform where people can share their own stories and share them with others and uh, it's a conversation starter so yeah thought I would be uh, thought I would start delving into that a little bit more and um, so if there's anything else that you would like to know more about uh, my Chinese background then do let me know in the comments below. I feel like I've rambled on a lot now um, but I hope this really long-winded video did make some sort of sense and um, you found it helpful in some way. Um, if you enjoyed it, I hate to do a plug but please give it a big like because it gives me a lot of feedback of whether this video was enjoyable and whether to make more of these kind of videos um, and if you're new to this channel hello I'm Shu and I would love for you to subscribe for more lifestyle food and travel content and yes I hope you're all having a lovely morning afternoon or evening and I shall see you in my next video bye